is in the fellowship and hanging out with people. But what was experienced there is they said, wow, this is real. And they will go home and they will network and they will go to a new level. But again, a lot of this infighting and all the stuff we see online over time will just become noise. It will become irrelevant. And people that really don't want to move forward and see the big picture, that's what I love about the conference, is it's people. Okay. Just going to talk. No, no intros or music or anything. Just, just going to add a little bit more white noise on the internet. Obviously, I knew that the video I put up yesterday was would would upset some people and and cause uh, you know that it, it would definitely be controversial. You know that was obviously the point. Um, and there is a number of sort of angles and a number of <laughs> it's not even just one thing. And so. Uh, you know, I, I'm the one who opened the can of worms, right? So I guess it's it's uh, incumbent upon me to try and unpack that and address the different aspects of it. You know, first and foremost being that um, it is one thing to be talking to people who are fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Because, you know, judgment is for within the church, not outside the church. So, you know, we have people reacting from, from a Christian perspective and a non-Christian perspective, and the responses to, to each are unique, so I'll, I'll try to cover both of those, obviously. But the, th but the point I wanted to make first was to help explain, because I think it was lost on a lot of people, and, you know, it's probably my fault, that the purpose of the video was not to mock people who were went to the conference or even people who participated as speakers in the conference, okay? As I've done in many other videos in the past, uh, using satire and you know comedy to to try and drive home a specific point, that was exactly what I was doing. So I was not mocking or calling these people freaks. You know whether you, the, some of the you know specifically you know people who were um, in that video, that Vice HBO video that you know we've all seen. It's been at the top of the the YouTube search for Flat Earth for however long now. You know, not surprisingly. Um, so the whole point was not to make fun of those anyone, as if I'm accusing you of being, uh, you know, a freak, or you know, or a crazy flat earther. <laughs> and this is, you know, and it's a little weird to have to try and explain that. But the whole point, right, about that is to deal with this question of involving the mainstream media, turning to the mainstream media, thinking that that is a mechanism that is a, some sort of strategic move for the cause of Flat Earth, right? So there's numerous points that are sort of all being made at once, and it's easy for people to kind of misconstrue them. I, I get that. So the whole Circus Sideshow thing is... I'm making a point, and several people were, were commenting, saying... You're editing and you're slowing things down and you're making them look, you know, silly and, and stupid when, you know, that's not an accurate representation. And that's the whole point. And hopefully, <laughs> um, I think, you know, most people get it. Like, it, why would you go and put yourself in the hands of corporate, you know, corporate entities that, that are only going to misconstrue, that are only going to, like, uh, play off of stereotypes and cliches that have been weaponized and part of the programming for years and years and years and you're just you're feeding into it you're playing you know you're 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 feeding into it you're playing off of it you're so for every bit as much of effort that you're putting into getting the act the information across getting your message across whether it's the proofs whether it's you know what your concepts of community you're providing them just by having them there this whole idea of pandering to the mainstream media, of thinking that, you know, there's no such thing, that no no press is bad press, that, you know, that's a marketing mentality that I am absolutely 110% in disagreement with. And, and all I'm trying to do, just like with any other video, is, you know, use audio visuals to, to help make a point, to illustrate a point. It's like how easy it is to do. And you know what interesting timing like right after I put that up ABC News just just this morning I I jump on and ABC News has come out with yet another piece on the flat earth right and, and and you know you can try and see the upside and go oh yeah this is getting it out to more people and you know of course they end with with an interview with Mike Massimino and it's just it brings it back to the the conspiracy at the end of the day anyways and for me that's the whole 
you know, it, it brings it back to the question of like, in order for these people to, they really want to be taken serious. Well, the inevitable conclusion of that conversation is how could such a conspiracy, big conspiracy, how could such a conspiracy be pulled off? Right. That's the real question. That's the bigger question than even just like, well, how could it really be flat and how can we prove it? Right. Is is the why question. And those are the questions that when you have this mixed bag of of presenters and people and, and you know, content creators or whatever from all over the map, well, we all have flat earth in common. But when it comes to the why question and when it comes to who created it, when it comes to what is really behind this whole conspiracy and you've got things that are diametrically opposed, and yet you're trying to convince me that this is what is going to change the world, and the, you know, good grief. You're going to get offended. You know, I, I can't believe my ears when I, I start listening into a podcast and hearing Robbie talking about, oh, we're going to change the world, and we're going to, you know, Comparing continually comparing it to the Reformation and uh, like never did I imagine that I would hear such things a couple of years ago when we, we were all first getting into this and and doing research and and sharing all sorts of things I never would have imagined that I would hear such a thing let alone you know turning it into this this weird Christian slash non Christian truther slash media uh, commercial enterprise just this 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 weird hybrid thing that I've never even seen before even in the truth community and the cons- I mean here's the thing guys you know I'm not surprised that people would get upset and 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 call this you know hit piece and call this act like it's going too far but but I just want to stop and remind everyone of like how many videos I've made in the past talking about Jason Lyle, talking about Kent Hovind, talking about Danny Faulkner, talking about, um, my goodness, Jeff Williams. I made a video called The Christonaut, right? And, I mean, you want to talk about, like, controversial. I mean, my goodness. We're, you're literally in the position of having to go, like, either this man is lying or he's some sort of, you know, mind control slave. Either way, he's still getting up and, and talking to churches about being on the ISS and, and orbiting around a ball and talking about Jesus, talking about, you know. So to be in that position, you know, that's the level. I mean, do you hear what I'm saying? You know, when I make videos kind of taking the words out of the mouths of the 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 mainstream Christian creationists, right? We've been talking about all these guys ever since the beginning, talking about Kent Hovind, talking about the quote unquote globe tards, talking about why, you know, just the crazy irony and the self contradiction of creationists, who, you know, their their primary goal is fighting evolution, fighting the false theory, the false pseudoscience of evolution, and we're saying, wow. This whole cosmology piece, this is all part of it. This is all an extension of that same debate, of that same deception, of that same issue. It's the same topic. It has the same significance. Because nobody nobody complains about, well, what does it matter if the earth is, you know, billions of years old versus a few thousand, like the Bible says. But we hear that all the time, right? And we've been going round and round and round with all these guys. We've been butting up heads against the double standard. Where they say, "Oh, well, the Bible is the Bible is true in its entirety, and we're supposed to take it literally." But once you start questioning the Copernican paradigm, suddenly they get all creative and they get all these sorts of metaphorical, allegorical, convoluted arguments and and rationalizations, and they start backpedaling. They start, you know, it's it's insane to watch it, to watch them just run in circles. But what is? <laughs> but why are we not learning from what we are seeing? Why are we not paying attention? Why are you not taking notes to how did it get to that point? What is what is it that is preventing these guys who know, who presumably, they already know that there's this huge conspiracy to convince people that evolution is scientific fact when it's absolutely not. They already know that they're, they're lying in the textbooks. 
they already know that you know, the world is fallen and sinful and um, rebellious against God. And uh, But yet Flat Earth comes along and they all just poop their pants and just want to squish it. Right? Why? Why is that? What are they afraid of? What is being threatened? Right? It, and what we come to realize is that there's, there's, there's a lot of idolatry going on at the same time. Out of one side of the mouth, they're they're talking about biblical literalism, and uh, let God be true and every man a liar. And we're going to stand on the word of God and true science versus false science. But, but they still want respectability in the eyes of the world. They've still bought into this idea that, you know, we've got to have a measure of, you know, of worldly, worldly accreditation, of worldly clout. We can't just be a bunch of yahoos that look like, you know, we can't just be a bunch of religious fundamentalists. And so they bring in people with PhDs. They bring in people with, you know, with experience in the field. And, and, and it, it all seems great. It's, it's all in the name of creation, right? It's all in the name of biblical truth. So what could be wrong with that? Are, you know, and they're putting out materials and they're taking in donations and they're, you know, they're writing books and they're making DVDs and they're going around doing presentations and lectures and doing all the things that... Uh, you know, typical ministry, 501c3, nonprofit type things do. And these guys, I don't think anybody would argue that these guys are getting rich off of it. I don't, I don't think Danny Faulkner or Jason Lyle are getting rich off of defending, you know, the heliocentric model. But it's not... So obviously money is a factor, but it's it's not a, it's not because they're just making so much that they're just rolling in dough and driving Ferraris. No, they're probably they're probably living you know pretty pretty modest lives. You know they they probably don't make a lot of money. They could probably make a lot more money as a tenured professor teaching evolution, right? So they're looking at it like they've taken a you know they've taken a sacrifice to stand up for what they're doing. So when we stand up and say, like, hey, there's a serious issue, your pride is blinding you. Your fear of being ridiculed by the world is blinding you to to, to a true scientific and biblical reality. They, they, it's, it's like, you know how offensive that is to them. And not just in the creation camp, but in the truther camp. Like, people that know not only that evolution is a lie, but they, they understand what Freemasonry is all about. They understand 9-11. They understand Genesis 6. All these things. And still, how many, I mean, we've all heard Rob Skiba talk about, you know, the, the, the cool crowd, the cool circle, right? And what happened when he actually took the step of, researching flat earth seriously and talking about it you know he was shunned he was out of the circle he was blacklisted you're we don't want to touch you because they were scared right is it because all those guys are making crap tons of money they're just they're just making money hand over fist but yeah they're they're look they're thinking about their bottom line they're thinking about their their giving they're thinking about, they're making a cost-benefit analysis. They're making a business decision based on what they perceive to be a, a crazy, you know, something that they just don't want to touch with a 10-foot pole because it's going to hit their bottom line. You know, it's it's the ministries that that are even, that are not making tons of money that are sometimes the most conscious of the, the decisions they make based off of financial considerations rather than, just the unadulterated truth. And this is why uh, I cannot stress enough like how important how serious it is to understand and be asking these questions and examining ourselves and examining our methods and motives and and actions and not just getting whipped, you know, not just getting caught up in the in the moment and caught up in the the movement and caught up in the the revelation and 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 in the midst of doing so, repeating all the same mistakes that we've seen happen time and time and time again. 
throughout the, in the church, in the world. I mean, not many of the people that I think listen to my stuff on a regular basis are, are big fans of, of mega churches and Joel Osteen and Saddleback. Thing. You know, we all know what what's going on with that. But we should also know that those didn't just pop up overnight, right? A mega church doesn't just build itself in a day, right? They start in somebody's living room. They start small and they build and they're just, and there's just a million tiny little decisions that are made along the way to get from A to Z, right? A tiny little, that each, each individual one doesn't seem like that big of a deal, right? And where do you draw the line? Where do you stop and say, no, we need, you know, but, but that's what's scary is because it's the same kinds of arguments and rationales and pleas to, you know, we need to put on a professional face. We need to uh, demand demand to be taken seriously by the world. That is that that is such a worldly mindset. That is not how the gospel has ever truly flourished anywhere by appealing to the mentalities of the world, by appealing to marketing and packaging. The gospel does not need that. It's actually antithetical to the gospel. The gospel is not a product. The truth is not a product to be to be bought and sold. And it's real easy to convince ourselves that that's not what is being done. It's real easy to to make compromises for the sake of you know pragmatism and for the sake for the sake of strategy, for the sake of getting the message out. So yeah, that's just one. You know, so that's a, that's a danger, a serious danger. But it's being compounded by partnering with people who are not even Christians at all. I mean, I put that video up yesterday, and already, you know, <laughs> Jaron's jumping in because obviously he thought I, you know, he was part of the conference, so he feels like I'm attacking him, and I'm not. Wasn't he, didn't even say anything about Jaron, but you know, he jumps in, and what is he doing? He's immediately just like spewing his disgust of of the Bible and Jesus and the gospel. The whole point of what's supposed to be flat Earth is there to to point people to, and um, you know, Jaron, if if you listen to this, you know, I do remember your your invitation to to talk about. Uh, all of that, and you know, maybe we should do that sometime. Have a have a real conversation, you know, not a debate, not if we're just going to sit there and you know, yell at each other or whatever. I'm not interested in that, but you know, we could have a real conversation. We really could. Yeah, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be open to that. But I, I w- but obviously, I couldn't stand on a stage and be part of the same event, be be part of the same thing with people who. Who actually hate the the message that I I would absolutely defend is is paramount above all the rest, far beyond flat Earth. I mean, we don't even see we don't see any of these other ministries that I've I've poked fun at how many times nobody had a problem with that, right? We all poke fun at NASA all the time. There are Christians who work at NASA, right? Nobody's nobody's telling me to apologize to them. You know, believe it or not, not all, there's so many people just, they they go overboard and they think, oh, y'all, anyone who denies flat earth, well, they, they must be a mason, they must be a shill, they're not really a Christian. No, they, they are. There There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them who's, who a lot of what they, they have to say about certain topics, I, I still, is, is still very sound and solid. And I, you know, so it's, it's been a difficult, we've been in a tricky situation from the, from the get go. As biblical literalists, as you know, truthers, as people who understand the times that we're living in, right? And that's what so much of this boils down to. It's not just that, you know, we're not just in some sort of historical, ambiguous uh, context. The birth pangs are getting pretty darn intense, right? So when we start talking about, you know, multi generational strategies and filling stadiums at some point. I'm just going like, wait, dude, 
I just made a video talking about, like, even if these guys were right and we lived on a globe, they'd still be on the wrong planet because of the eschatological blindness, like, and how that, and I'm trying to argue how that factors into cosmology and factors into flat earth and how flat earther, most of the flat earthers I know, they, they aren't oblivious to what's really going on. You know, the Christians, I talked to a lot of them and a lot of them who were at the conference. And again, I'm not, you know, if you want to go to a conference, you know, that's fine. I don't care. If you want to sell books, that's, I don't care. It's, it's bigger than that. And that's part of the problem is that, yeah, there's been things that I know from behind the scenes that I've heard that really just, oh, I wrestled, you know, how much do I, how much do I say? Conversations that I've had with Robbie, the things that he told me about what, you know, when he was trying to get me on board with all this, you know, how much do I, and he thought I was going to get all excited and want to be a part of it and want to, you know, want to board the train and it, it only, it only just disturbed me, you know, but how much do I say? Cause then it's like, well, it's gossip and it's, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, it's not glorifying God. And so, you know, I've been trying to just bite my lip and carry on and talk about the topics and talk about, <laughs> Just, just, just avoid all this, this stuff. And yeah, and I listened to that thing with David Weiss, and I, I kind of snapped. I kind of did. I can't believe the things that I'm hearing. I can't. It's not just like one or two, you know. If I wanted to nitpick, I'd be like, dude, why do you even have a, a, a Google microphone thing in your house? I mean, I think that was Robbie's. Go like, dude. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. We all have cell phones. We're all being recorded all the time. Anyways. But, like, do, when do you, where do you draw the line? When do you start really going, like, hey, this is, do you see, we see where this is all going. You should see. We should know. And here's the thing. It's like, I, I guess, I guess the tactic now, or the, the response is to just be like, hey, you're just hiding behind your channel. You don't want to come out. You don't want to be a part of the community. You don't want to show your face. You don't want to, you know, I'm hiding, right? When in reality, I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> I struggle every day with going, like, how do I address the question of, of getting sucked further and further into this whole technological, this whole techno-ubiquitous, social media-saturated, digital economy, on and on and on. There's just all of it. Not even just the the hardware and the mechanics of it, but, but just the, the, the you know the psychological, the spiritual, the the addiction. Uh, most of you probably saw that video that Anonymous put out recently, where all the the Google and Facebook execs, the, all these guys that are talking about the the actual straight up addictive nature of of Facebook and social media and all that. And this is something I've been I've been trying to avoid it for years. I've I've not been on Facebook in like seven years, you guys. I did not touch social media until really getting, well, I had a blog, I guess that counts. But, you know, YouTube, I wasn't anticipating any of this. I'm just a guy, right? I've just been a guy wrestling with the realization that we're living in the times that we're living in, that the world is not what it seems, that the truth is literally stranger than fiction, and that the truth of the Bible is stranger than fiction, and most Christians don't even want to realize that, right? So, so okay, if I'm talking to somebody who's just your 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 quote unquote stereotypical sheeple, you're, you're, and they just believe in what they they watch on the news and what the government tells them, and they, you know, thank you for your service when they see a military person, and they, you know, here in in Vegas now, you know, now we're all Vegas strong. We got bumper stickers everywhere, you know. And it's just deeper and deeper into the into the programming so i you know i wrestle with like how do i engage with those people and wake them up to the, to the realities that there there really is a, a kingdom of of light and a kingdom of darkness and the king kingdom of darkness is behind all sorts of really crazy things going on in the world that most people can't even believe is possible most christians can't even you know just whether it's like 
the idea that they would actually like you know hang people from wires and have them float around in front of a green screen and pretend to be in space. Oh, but they're, they're Christians. You know, we're talking about crazy stuff here. We're talking about crazy spiritual stuff. And there's so many things that I haven't even, that we haven't even touched upon yet. You know, people want to talk about flat earth is just the, the, the biggest truth, the biggest conspiracy. It's not, it's not even. Even setting aside the, the issue of the creator, who created it, who's coming back. There's other things. And this is what I, I don't think is, is fully being appreciated too, where if you want to just try and unite under this banner, under this one tent of, well, we all agree with Flat Earth and we might disagree about maps and models, but we all know it's not a globe, so that's, you know, that's pretty special. You know, there's there's a lot of other things, just even about the creation itself that, you know, Flat Earth touches upon, but hasn't quite become an awakening, but it, 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 a quote unquote awakening. But what if it did? What if, what if electromagnetism really started, uh, breaking forth, you know, really trying to get to the bottom of, of how these sonoluminescent electromagnetic manifestations really work. And what does that mean in terms of the world and, you know, the effect of consciousness on reality? And do you, do you, do we know what the, do, have we forgotten what the Bible says about about the last days in terms of signs and wonders that the Antichrist is going to do? Are you prepared to to stand in that gap with your fellow, fellow flat earthers who, you know, think the, the Bible is a control mechanism of, of the powers that be? I'm so sick of hearing that, you guys. But just keep bringing them up on stage and keep partnering with them and keep, you know, but dude... <laughs> Oh, they believe in a creator. David Weiss, David Weiss, I know you believe in a creator. That's awesome. You're pondering things. You're pondering the satanic nature of things. And that's, you know, I'm not trying to to degrade that. Okay, but it's it's bigger than just obvious Satanism. It's bigger than just rituals. It's bigger than just NASA. It's bigger than, you know, it's beyond just people in robes at Bohemian Grove, you know, raping boys in cages. Right, we all we can all look at that and, and understand that's that's evil, that's wrong, well, that's that's easy. What about the other guy over there who's talking about the kundalini, the kundalini energy going up his spine into his you know crown chakra? Do you understand that that's the it's the same spirit behind that? Do you understand that there is there is entities up in somehow some way in this enclosed world that we live in, up in the ether, up in the air, up in the second heaven, and down below, there are spiritual entities, there are all kinds of things that would just blow our freaking minds if we, you know, if it all suddenly just manifested and was visible. You know, the idea of the earth just being flat and not a ball is, is actually pretty simplistic and pretty, pretty small potatoes. Pretty small potatoes compared to the spiritual reality that it's like overlaid on top of all of it. Spiritual dimensions that we're all that are around us all the time that we don't even we don't even begin to understand how it all works. We're we're sitting here arguing and debating over you know the map and how the luminaries work, and it's like, dude, this is. <laughs> I, I feel like the angels probably just laugh sometimes when they overhear us. I'm like, they like these people, they have no idea. <laughs> They have no idea. And Satan's laughing more than anyone because he's like, he's been preparing, you know, the, the final act for a long time. And I don't pretend to know how it's all going to go in terms of aliens or quantum ethereal entities from another dimension or just some AI supercomputer. You know, who who knows? It could all, it could all be it's simultaneous. I, I don't know. It's... It sounds silly when you say it out loud, and it's like then you turn on the TV, and it's like all it's it's in your face every day, and it's all the same New Age gospel, the the syncretistic one world, you know, religion of man elevating himself to be God, 
man seeking to transcend, you know, the limitations of just of humanity, man rejecting the idea that we are sinful and in need of a savior and that Jesus is that savior. I mean, it's, it's, it's all one thing at the end of the day. It's all one big lie. And so we're, we're all excited about like one little piece of the lie, one little thing, and when that's going to take over the world. As a Christian, and you're saying that like the idea that the, the world is flat and not a globe is going to change the world, I'm going to, I make no apologies for holding up my hand and saying, excuse me, I think you're missing some things. I think you're getting way ahead of yourself. I think you're listening to people like Mark Sargent who don't have a biblical perspective and don't understand the world that they live in, don't understand what's behind the conspiracy. They don't have spiritual discernment. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't know what the Bible even says. And yet you're clearly listening to them and taking and being influenced, taking it, you know, being influenced by that mindset and that mentality, quoting him. Why are you doing that? You know, I don't, I have no issue with like having dialogue and conversation and even, even collaboration on, you know, we could all get together and, and do experiments and, and do more things and put up balloons and test curvature and all the rest. You know, there's, we have all that in common. There's no, or, you know, have conversations, have live streams and have all these things, right? But once you start actually then going, okay, we're going to have an event and I'm going to charge, charge admission and, you know, for an extra hundred bucks, you can get a front row seat and you can get, you know, special access to the, to the people on stage, you know, sorry. There's no, there's no need for that. There's nothing but there's nothing good that comes from that. You're just feeding back into the 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 whole consumeristic mentality, the whole you know celebrity worship, putting people on pedestals, glamorizing personalities, and that's something I've never wanted to be a part of. And I never even realized how much it was a thing even on YouTube when I got into this. I had you guys, I had no idea that even like small. Ch- I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't even, I was barely even on YouTube before making these videos, you know, I was just writing blog posts. I was, I was kind of past that point. And uh, so, yeah, it's been very, it's been a crazy, weird experience to go from just being, <laughs> I remember when like a hundred people had watched a video and it was like, it just was the weirdest thing because... It's a hundred people, you know, trying to, trying to imagine a hundred people being in a room listening to you. And it, it, it's, it's crazy. It freaks you out. But then it's like, oh yeah, suddenly it's, it's more, it just builds and it's thousands of people and, you know, it's exciting and you get, you get swept up in it, man. You do. And it's been showing, and it showed me signs of myself, with, like I said, with social media and how many likes and how many views. And, oh, I got, you know, I got a shout out over here. I got an invitation there and people wanting you to come and do interviews. And all of a sudden it just got really, you know, all this attention really quickly. And I tried to just avoid it for the most part. And I was almost in all that stuff. You know, pull, pulling out of Scientism Exposed was, and I looked back at that and was like, man, that was close. That was crazy. Not because I, I disagree with the majority of the stuff in it. I, I do, but it's like, it's, it's the, like I said, it's the big picture. It's not, it's not just about like, is it right or wrong to, to sell a DVD or a book or, you know, hey, we want to get... You know, the thing about the conference is that it's always about like hey, it's a, the main thing is it's about the people. It's about the the fellowship and people meeting face to face. I get all that. I get why the majority of people go. I mean, I get why most people went. I do. I wanted to go <laughs> for that reason. I wanted to go and talk to a lot of people face to face and you know meet other people who. You know, I know that's really the main reason why most people went. I do. And that's what's uh, that's what's so hard, is right? Is that people want to connect and they want to feel not alone. They want to feel like, hey, there's other people that, you know, we're we're under all this pressure from the people around us and the family. Uh, you know, a lot of persecution, and so so 
you know, so I get why people are hungry for that, that real connection and making, you know, building friendships and connections that'll last a long time. I get all that. I'm not, you know, I'm not condemning anybody for that. <laughs> like, if I had gone and I almost, you know, I really did think about it, that's why I would have gone. And I know I would, I would have had a good time hanging out with those people. But at the same time, I would have seen all these reporters and media people, and I probably, um, I don't know what I would have done. I don't think I would have been able to 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 hang around that, because there's there's more going on. You know, I I get, I get that it's not about making money for most of the people. You know, even the presenters and even the the people who had book tables and stuff. I know probably most, if not all of them, probably didn't make <laughs> make a profit, especially when you had to pay however however many hundred dollars it was just to have a table there, right? Um, but oh, it's expensive. We have to have a you know cost money to to rent a hotel. I get that, but see, this is the exact same sort of circular arguments that the church has been making. For, for how long? It costs money to, you know, keep the lights on. It costs money to have a sanctuary. It costs money to have a professional pastor stand in front of you and tell you what the Bible says. It costs money to do mission work. It costs money. Right? So, dollars coming. Growth in terms of numbers and attendance and members. And, you know, it's a business. The church is a business. It relies on marketing. It relies on corporate infrastructure models to work. I mean, I'm preaching to the, to the choir with a lot of you. So what what are we modeling ourselves after? This weird hybrid of, you know, worldly, new age, hyper optimism. <laughs> we're going to take, we're going to take the power back. We're going to, we're going to turn over the powers that be. We're going to wake up the world, Right. The Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer, you know, and again, I've never called anyone a shill, ever. I'm not interested in trying to figure out if somebody's on a government payroll, you know, like, even if you, even if you, even if certain people were and you actually found the proof, how could you prove to everyone else that your proof was, was real and you didn't make it, you know, I'd, it'd be a hard thing to prove. COINTELPRO or whatever, it's just, it's pointless. Because you don't need to get into any of that. It's not about shills. It's about, you know, what what's coming out of people's mouth. It's not about, I don't care who you are. I don't care about, it's not about personalities, right? The truth is the truth. The whole, the whole point, it's like, just like you can go out and verify whether there's curvature over a body of water or if a, you know, a, a gyroscope really really tilts in accordance with the alleged curvature or the alleged rotation of the earth. You can, you can verify if, if the things that me or someone else is saying actually lines up with what the Bible says. And if what the things going on in the world lines up with what the Bible says, you can go and verify for yourself if what's inside your own heart lines up with what the Bible says. The Bible is a zetetic book. People get all up in arms, you know, debating whether the Bible is a flat earth book, you know. But so much beyond that. It's a zetetic book. Taste and see that the Lord is good. See for yourself. You know, we can't touch Jesus's the the scars in his hands and his side like like Thomas did. But we can see the scars that are going on all over the, all over the place. All the all the the reality of sin that that needed to be paid for, the reality of evil, and it's one thing to see it out in the world and to see it in you know those lying NASA Freemasons and and the the powers that should not be, but if you can't see that same evil, that same sin nature in your own self, then you're still blind. You're still missing it, and. Uh, you can't sell people on that idea. You can't polish that message up. You can't tickle people's ears or, you know, impress them. You can't gain enough credibility in the eyes of the world in order to make that message any more appealing. 
Because that, that's what it, that's what it all that, that's what it boils down to. No matter no matter what the whole meandering road is, everyone comes to that point, that decision, you know, in a slightly different way. Everyone's journey is slightly different. We all come from different backgrounds and different inputs and different everything. Okay, but that's that's the line that everyone eventually finds themselves standing at, and the decision they have to make. Am I a sinner who needs a savior? Is really all of this stuff that we see going on, whether it's in the banking, in the technology, or the Hollywood, or the propaganda, or the the, the whole fake pseudo scientific community and NASA, and on and on, that really it's all just being fueled by <laughs> by sin. By man rebelling against God, wanting wanting to know good and evil for himself. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. And you'll either come to see that, that there, there's truth to that, and it explains everything. Or you'll you'll reach that line and you'll say, Mm-mm, I don't I don't wanna be honest about that reality in in me in my own heart, in my own spirit. And you'll there's a million other things that you can turn to as distractions or as rationales. And they're all in flat earth, right? It's amazing how many of them import. You can reject reject cosmological evolution and Darwinian evolution, but embrace spiritual evolution. So <laughs> So is that a net gain at the end of the day if somebody rejects uh, you know Dawkins but then but then they start uh, listening to the lies by Santos Bonacci. You know, the, the stuff is stuff is serious, you guys. We spend all this time and energy and effort exposing the lies of the satanic elites and exposing the, uh, you know, the occult roots of scientism and exposing <laughs> exposing the satanic, you know, secret societies behind NASA. Oh, and it's like but then you turn around and listen to Santos Bonacci. And I'm not trying to just single him out, but, you know, everyone knows him. Because he's not saying anything new. It's all just regurgitated uh, esoteric occultism from centuries before. There's nothing, nothing, nothing new. It's the, same, it's the same thing. It's the same... It's the same core thing. There's, there, yes, there's all these surface differences, but it's the same thing as the Theosophical Society and the Rosicrucians and the, the Freemasons. and all. It's all the same lies. It's all the same. That you can be God. You don't need forgiveness. There's no such thing as sin. God is within you. There's a little bit of truth in all religions. The difference between science and magic is just, you know, a difference of perception and understanding. You know, I could go on and on. I have been going on and on for how long now? So, so if anything, it's kind of shocking to me that you would be offended, that you would be at all surprised by my reactions to standing up on a stage and proclaiming that we're going <laughs> to turn the world around and we're going to wake everyone up to flat earth and that it's just going to be this big, you know, the, this big revival Apparently, I don't. I don't understand the the eschatological mindset beyond behind what I'm hearing. I don't. I don't. It, it makes no sense to me. All I hear is just flat Earth and flat Earth unity, and and everything else is like, oh, it'll just sort itself out, right? Eventually. <laughs> I think it's short sighted. And it's myopic, and it's it's the same it's the same error that we've seen with all the so the the creationists who who mock flat Earth, but you know they're right when it comes to the the truth of creation versus evolution. They're right. They're just there's only certain truths that they're comfortable with, and that's where they've they've made their they've made their bed, they've made their nest, they've got their little you know their ministry and again it's not about like they're they're not making tons of money but there's enough money to where they've got they have something to lose right 
all those guys, you know, Jason Lyle, who's his whole, his whole education, his whole, his PhD is all the books he's written. It would all be, he'd have to walk away from it all. And we think, oh, well, no, we've, we've, we've made it now. We find the last piece. So we have nothing that we need to be worried about in terms of, you know, building our own little media enterprise and creating our own little portfolio, making a name for ourselves, being a, being the face of flat earth, being the next Kent Hovind of flat earth. Is that, I mean, I mean, is that anywhere near the truth possibly? Because I mean, it's this this brand new undiscovered thing, and, and it needs it needs a hero, right? It needs it needs figures to stand up and, and lead the movement, be a champion. We need flat Earth champions, right? You know, Kent Hovind is an interesting interesting figure, because uh, I didn't know much about him um, for a long time. I knew of him and had seen some of his stuff, and yeah, you know, how he just kind of would dismantle. All sorts of evolutionary arguments, and you know, I'd, I'd seen that over the years, but um, didn't know a ton, especially after I learned about the New World Order and conspiracies and all that. I had no idea that Kent Hovind, before he went to jail, uh, was really he was actually talking all about that in in many ways about the the illegal tax issue and the social, you know, the whole. The Federal Reserve, he talk, talks about Freemasons and how it's a satanic organization. You know, Kent Hovind knew, knows, or knew all about the the New World Order. He knew that there was a satanic conspiracy going on in the world. He was talking about more than just creation versus evolution, unlike a lot of his, you know, um, contemporaries. So he was, a, he was this, you know, everyone marveled at his witty manner of being able to just, you know, expose the, just the, the sheer foolishness of evolution, particularly biological evolution, but all, all, you know, many forms of evolution, right? It was, it was great stuff. He was, he was a champion. He was a face. He was somebody that we could point people to and, um, you know, and all that material is still great stuff. It, like I said, it was in Scientism Exposed, Right. But what happened to Ken Hovind? You know, this is an interesting question because I didn't, I didn't even, I had heard that he had gone to jail and it was something about, you know, he didn't pay taxes or tax fraud or something like that. You know, it's just kind of things you hear. And then um, when I was still just doing the blog, I got, I actually got pretty involved in that whole thing because I, I met some guys who, who were doing a podcast called God's Property Radio. And Kent Hovind had actually, his videos had actually played a very significant role in their coming to understand the, you know, the the New World Order and the reality of, of the times that we were living in just by watching his stuff online. And they got very involved in his whole prison sentence and, and his whole case and were starting to do interviews and, you know, they were like calling him in jail before he got out. And so I, I got all I got up all, all up in it, man. I was very involved in terms of reading all these, um, you know. There's all these articles being written about him by I forget the guy's name now. He was some some guy who wrote about like you know tax issues and stuff. He was always trying to portray Kent as a as a tax protester and and so anyways, these guys these guys that were doing interviews with Kent Hovind, right? Because they you know they were really keen to talk to to talk to Kent about all the stuff having to do with the New World Order and <laughs> Freemasonry and, you know, you name it, the Federal Reserve, and he wouldn't talk about any of it, even before he got out of jail. He wouldn't talk about any of it, wouldn't talk even really about his case, just basically acted like he was just confused and it was a big misunderstanding and he was not a tax protester and he was not trying to, you know, get away with anything. And, and the more he talked, the more it was just like, you're going, what the heck, what the heck happened? And he's like, I don't want to talk about that stuff anymore. I just want to focus on on creation versus evolution. So okay, you know that's a that's a important topic. But to be like, dude, you're on the record talking about all these conspiratorial things, and either they're true or you do not think they're true anymore. And it's just like, no, he just kept he would just sidestep it, and then he gets out, and it turns out that yes, 
his, you know, he and his wife had been separated for, for years while he was in prison, didn't even talk. And he, you know, that was all sort of being undisclosed. And there was just, it was just, it just got weirder and fishier as time gone on. And then, yeah, he gets out and gets, tries to get back on the saddle and, and all these crazy flat earthers and he's attacking it. But it was somewhere, somewhere in there, the rubber hit the road and it got real. And I don't know if he ever did have that conversation with, you know, the men in, the men in black suits or whatever. If anyone actually ever did sit him down and make him an offer he couldn't refuse type of thing. Or if he was just putting two and two together and realizing that like, yeah, if you want to get out, if it was just implied or, or inferred and he put it together, like, I'm not going to talk about any of this crazy conspiracy stuff anymore because he didn't. And now he's back at it again, dinosaur adventure land, right? Because he has his ministry. He didn't want to get caught up in all this, all this conspiracy nonsense, all this flat earth nonsense. Because he had a reputation that was still worth something, right? He just he just started over, got remarried, moved to a new state, got a new piece of property, got new donors, new mailing lists, just, you know, work the process. Build rebuild the brand. It all broke down somehow with his son and his wife and many I've talked to many people who were, you know, part of it before, but a lot of interesting lessons to be learned just from that example alone you know he got close he was closer to understand you know he was there he, he was closer to tying it all together the live evolution and the deception with that to the the, the, the bigger conspiracy than anyone else i've ever seen come come along in in the creationist realm maybe they're out there but uh he sure did a sure did a backpedal in there Eight years in prison, and that's the thing. It's like, I'm not going to, I've never spent eight years in prison. But that's kind of the thing. It's like, really, you want to, are you sure you know what you're doing when you're inviting the mainstream? This is the same mainstream media, like, as David Weiss could tell you all about, in terms of all of his expertise on things like false flags and parading. I mean, how controlled is the, is the, is the mainstream media again? When it comes to, they actually have the ability to to stage all these events and and entertain crisis actors and even pretend to have a, a reporter shot by some. I mean, how much crazy stuff has happened? The Vegas shooting and the all this stuff. Why would you go anywhere near any of that? Like, are you are you kidding me? It's like why don't why don't we just go into the UN and expect to to get a you know you know how much did how much did Jesus say in his defense in front of Herod? How much time and energy and effort did he spend trying to be taken seriously by the Pharisees? How much energy and time did he put into you know convincing Pilate and and the the Romans that he was who he says he was? Jesus didn't use marketing. He didn't use professionalism. <laughs> it was just the power of God in a humble, backwater little package. This insignificant little man from Nazareth. And it turned the world upside down. Because he's real. Because he's alive. Because he's really up in heaven right now. He's really coming back. So yeah, you're you're mad because I'm poking fun at... I'm not even poking fun at the conference. I'm poking fun at like you convincing yourself that they're not poking fun at you. And, ultimately, and I don't even think that the, the shoe has really dropped yet in terms of... See, now it's just... Yeah, it, it will probably bring in more people. People will watch these ABC bits and these Vice HBO bits, and they they there will be a certain percentage that will, you know, check it out. There will be. Okay, but that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of the equation. I'm, I'm almost... Really, the thing that, that frightens me more than anything is that if you do taste a measure of acceptability, that would probably be the, the worst outcome. The more seriously the world takes you, the more dangerous a position you're in. 
the more of a pedestal that you end up getting put upon, the more of a face, the more of a figurehead, the more of a, a champion you become. And I'm not just I'm not just talking about any one person, any of us, any of us. It's not what Jesus did. It's not what the the apostles did. They went they went around hungry <laughs> and naked and wretched and despised and persecuted, chased from town to town. The world was not worthy of them. They were not held in high esteem by the world. They were ridiculed and mocked. And yet the gospel spread. Because they had no fear of death. Because they believed it 100%. They went to their deaths praising God. And preaching the, the truth of Jesus. Even in the face of their own execution. Even in the, in the face of the execution of their, their families. And it freaked <laughs> freaked people out, and it shook people awake. And presumably, if we really believe what we say we believe about biblical cosmology, and that all of them would have known that the earth was flat, and that the firmament was the firmament, right? That wasn't what they were shaking people awake with. Maybe everyone already assumed that too, despite what the you know, historians try and tell us now, but you get the point. They believed that Jesus was who he said he was, that he was the Son of God, come in the flesh, who died and rose again, the sacrifice for sin, the king whose kingdom had not yet come, he was going to return and judge the world. <sighs> Anyways, the... The bottom line is that the time is, is running short. And, um, you know, as a body of Christ, we have to be getting more and more serious about asking the tough questions and clinging, clinging to the Lord more and more and not, you know, earthly organizations and institutions and, you know, and, and movements that come and go and, and, and fantasies about... <laughs> Some sort of you know humanistic dream of turning the tide back to where we think it should be in in direct disregard for for what Bible prophecy clearly says. And you know, Robbie, I know I know you're mad that I'm saying this stuff, and that I don't know you know what to. Do. I'm not saying I handled everything perfectly, or it was you know I didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings or offend anyone, you know. The point is, is like, yeah, yeah, when we start taking ourselves more and more seriously and our movement and it's like, that's the wrong direction, you know, getting all enmeshed in, in the world of notoriety and it's not good enough just to have information on the internet. We got to be doing things in such a way as that they'll, you know, get on the IMDB and get on Rotten Tomatoes and get part of that system so that it makes it real, right? These, these are the things I've heard, you know, being said. We got to use these these little documentaries, these these freebies, to then at some point raise money so that we can you know spend fifty thousand, hundred thousand on on a real documentary and and make it legit. You know, this is where it's good. It's where it wants to go. You know, and I wake up every day wrestling with you know, can I walk away? Am I in too deep already? Do I love all this stuff too much? Do I love the the weird little gratifications of, of views and likes. and It scares me. And yeah, I'm hiding because I don't... I'm, I don't trust myself. I don't trust that whole realm of celebrity worship. You know, I've, I've seen it. I've been through it. I finally got away from it. I almost... I almost, you know, lost God in the process. Of course, he never lost me he never you know let go of me but it's just not what we need you know if 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 feeling alone and isolated because you're a crazy flat earther is is too much to bear to where you know without without some yearly reunion type thing 
I mean, if that's really the the selling point that we need this, we're just going to make it bigger and bigger every year, right? This this some big some big central event, and we'll have more, and well, everyone will have to to cling to the other flat earthers. I mean, what are you going to do when you're faced with the decision between denying Christ and you know being able to to buy or sell? You know, and I and you want to call that doom and gloom and and fatalism and defeatism? I I don't care. I I have wrestled with these questions and realities and matters like enough to where I you're never going to convince me that it's just all in my head and that it's just you know Illuminati brainwashing wanting me to you know just like Jaron and all of them have bought into that it's just you're you're letting them have their way you're rolling over and dying I mean that's exactly what what the the apostles did right they didn't. They lived in the context of an authoritarian system, a satanic empire, an antichrist system, an antichrist empire that had real armies and temples and infrastructure and control in the real world, right? They crucified thousands of Christians. That's not the way the world would think to fight a war. That's not how they perceive truth to be defended and spread. By being a martyr. Or by, by refusing to compromise. By refusing to denounce Christ and then sacrifice everything. All your comforts, all your... Everything we, we use every day. I mean, if we can't even let go of superficial things like being taken seriously in the... <laughs> in the media. Or having a presence on the internet... What are you going to do when you're you're hungry and you don't know where your next meal is going to come from? And you can't go into a store anywhere or buy gasoline or pay your bills unless you unless you're bought in. And that day is coming. And it's not it, you know, and in the grand scheme of things it's really not that big, is it? Most of most of history didn't have to deal with that issue. So why why this this one thing? Why why does God have an antichrist come? Why why did He choose to do it this way? I I still wrestle with that question myself. Why why do we have to deal with this craziness? I like a lot of things about modern society, guys. As much as I try and you know, I'm a luddite in so many ways. You guys would laugh. I can't. I can't even. I can't even like visit certain, you know, basic websites on on my phone right now because the 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 operating system is so outdated. I can't use Skype on my phone anymore. Um, my laptop is is the same thing. It's about to be useless. Nothing's gonna gonna work anymore. All the videos I've made, except for maybe one or two, they they they've been made. I make them with Windows Movie Maker. It doesn't cost any money. You get all the images off the internet, all the music off the internet. It's all, you know, that's only going to be probably doable for a short time longer. It's getting harder. It's getting harder all the time. Copyright stuff. But yeah, I use stuff that has copyright material in it because I don't want people to, to take stuff and then monetize or sell it on a DVD. Because all, all that does is just draw you in deeper. All that does is just make you more dependent and... and you know, you don't know how many times I've thought of just shutting the whole thing down and just getting off the internet, right? The only thing that has actually kept me going at this point is when pe all the people that email me and leave comments and stuff and talking about how they have found God. They found Christ, not just the Creator, but they found Christ. And it's been this crazy weird tension. And maybe it's just coming to a head now. Maybe this is it. I don't know. I can't be a, I refuse to be a part of that circus. And I and it pains me to see other people unwittingly being a part of it. I don't think anybody nobody thinks they're part of a, you know, part of a deception, part of a part of an op. That's the whole thing. I don't know. I I love you all. 
And at the end of the day, there's there's people that have mocked Flat Earth and mocked everything we're doing and said very mean things that at the end of the day are my, my brothers and sisters in Christ, right? And people who totally believe that the Earth is flat and know all about the NASA fakery and all that, who, re who reject the blood of Christ. So who's my, who's my family, who's my fellowship at the end of the day? People who, despite everything else, know who Christ is, know who they are in him, or people who know about a lot of tangential truths about the world, about the Illuminati or the whatever. They don't know Jesus. It all comes down to that every time, eventually. So we can make it about whatever and, and come up with all these these really convincing sounding arguments about, you know, how God can use it and, you know, it costs money to do everything and everybody uses money. You know, we're all using the tool. I get it, you know. This is all on YouTube. Who owns that? You know, so why is that okay? I get it. At some point, you just got to stop and be like, okay, hold up. It's time to just learn to be the quote-unquote dust of the earth, the remnant, the nameless people that nobody knows. But God does. And if we really go through the the tribulation, there's going to be no celebrities. There's going to be no podcasts. There's going to be no conferences and book signings and no movie premieres, no church services, no entertaining ideas that <laughs> the president is secretly fighting the Antichrist with the white hats in the government. I mean, there will be none of that. We're talking about a time unlike any other in all of history, where if those days had not been sh cut short, that no flesh would survive. You know, I'm not trying to be melodramatic. I'm just, I have to remind myself of what scripture says, how serious that is. Because I, you know, I can talk about it all the time and, and even allow myself to just kind of become casual about it, and not really let it sink in. How much of all the stuff that we're, you know, at that point, is it, I'm, I'm going to be arguing about NASA? I don't think so. If I live to see those days, you know, if I do, <laughs> do you ever think about these things? Am I the only one? Do you ever wonder about, like, if, if you do just find yourself one day in, in some sort of FEMA camp or whatever, you don't know if it's how long you're going to be there, maybe you, what if you spent years in something like that, some facility? Would you be sharing G Jesus with the people around you? Would you be singing hymns and worship songs just from memory? Quoting, quoting scriptures, having Bible studies from memory. I mean, I think about that, and it's it's humbling. How much how much of the Bible do I have committed to memory that I could do that? It's kind of sad. I'm not a good chapter verse quoter, but even yeah. how much of it all is just white noise? How much of what I say and do in the course of any given day is just white noise? And how much of it has eternal worth? That is a good question.